Hello class, this is Miss Augustine. We are still talking about atoms and atomic structure, and today we're going to talk about counting atoms, or specifically what is meant by atomic number, mass number, and isotopes. So when we talk about atomic structure, quite a bit of information is given to us when we look at the periodic table. So the first thing we notice is the atomic number, and that is uh, depending on which periodic table you're looking at, it's either going to be in one corner or the other, the top, the bottom. So how do we keep it all straight? The atomic number is generally an integer because it tells us the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom of an element. Um, you also get the atomic weight or atomic mass, and that's the average mass of the atoms of an element. And so, in this particular periodic table example, it's in the upper right. But the way you tell them apart is that the atomic weight or atomic mass is usually a number with a whole bunch of decimals after it, whereas the atomic number is just an integer because, remember, it's telling me the count, the number of protons in the nucleus. And then some other information, you've got the element name, you get... Um, the electron configuration in some, and we'll learn about these in subsequent chapters. You get physical constants. This particular uh, periodic table gives you the boiling point, the melting point, the density, um, and the oxidation state. So those are some other things that are given on um, a square of the periodic table. So let's delve into this atomic number thing a little bit more. I've said that it's the number of protons in the nucleus of an element, and it's going to always be an integer for that reason. It's a count. And remember that the identity of an element is determined by its atomic, uh, the atomic number. So the atomic number, or the number of protons in the nucleus, is the identity of an element. And that atomic number also gives you the number of electrons. Remember that atoms are electrically neutral, so the atomic number for a neutral atom tells you the number of protons in the nucleus and the number of electrons outside the nucleus. And again, if there's an equal number of protons in the nucleus as there are electrons outside of the nucleus, then you're electrically neutral. So on the periodic table, for instance, for hydrogen, the atomic number is one. That means it has one proton in its nucleus. That's the identity, hydrogen. And it has one electron when it's neutral. For carbon, with atomic number six, that means that in the nucleus there are six protons, and if it's electrically neutral, then it has six electrons outside of the nucleus. So what is mass number, and how does that differ from atomic mass? So the atomic mass listed on the periodic table is actually a weighted average mass of all of the different atoms of an element whereas the mass number is the atomic mass on the periodic table that has been rounded to the nearest whole number. So example, oxygen has an atomic mass of 15.9994 AMUs, atomic mass units, so its mass number would be rounded to 16. So we're rounding to the whole number, so 9 followed by 9, we're going to round that up to 16. And for carbon, with an atomic mass on the periodic table of 12.0107 AMUs, we would round the mass number up to 12, so nearest whole number. So on the periodic table, um, when we're reading things off, we often will also get something called hyphen notation. And the hyphen notation uh, gives you the mass number. So for instance, carbon 12, the number 12 is telling us that we're talking about carbon with a mass number of 12. And the mass number, again, is the total number of protons and neutrons in a nucleus. So if you think about an atom for a minute, we learned earlier that um, protons have a mass that's set at 1 AMU, and neutrons have a mass that's also set at 1 AMU. Um, and electrons have a mass that's set at zero. So when you're looking at the mass of an atom, the mass comes from two things. 
the protons and the neutrons. So the mass number, when you've rounded to a whole number, is telling you the total number of protons and neutrons in a nucleus. And again, we're rounding the atomic mass on the periodic table to the nearest whole number to get that mass number. So in order to calculate the number of neutrons, because remember, atomic number gives me the number of protons, and the mass number is really the number of protons plus neutrons. So if I wanted to know how many neutrons there are, I would have to take the mass number and subtract the atomic number, remembering that the number of neutrons is equal to the mass number, which is protons plus neutrons, minus the atomic number, which is just protons. So then all that would be left is the number of neutrons. So calculating the number of neutrons, an example. In an atom of carbon-12, how many neutrons are in the nucleus? So the number of protons is equal to the atomic number, which is 6 for carbon, and the mass number is equal to 12. So the number of neutrons for carbon-12 would be mass number 12 minus atomic number 6 equals 6. So there are 6 neutrons in the nucleus of an atom of carbon 12. So why are we calling it carbon 12? Well it turns out that atoms have something called isotopes and those are atoms of the same element that have the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons and remember neutrons have mass. So they have to have the same atomic number because if they didn't have the same atomic number they wouldn't be the same element. But by having different numbers of neutrons in their nucleus they will have different mass numbers. So they're different forms of the same element. So for example carbon has three known isotopes carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14. And they differ in the number of neutrons in the nucleus. So carbon-12, you'll recall, had six neutrons. That means carbon-13 has seven and carbon-14 has eight. So all of the isotopes of carbon have the same number of protons. If not, they would be a different element. That means they all have six protons. So carbon-12 has six neutrons, carbon-13 has seven neutrons, and carbon-14 has eight neutrons. So think about this. Six plus six is 12. That gets us to carbon-12. Six plus seven is 13. That's where we get carbon mass 13. And six plus eight is 14. That's where we get carbon with mass number 14. And this is another way that periodic tables sometimes uh, display elements. So here you'll see carbon-612, carbon-613, and carbon-614. The uh, atomic number 6 is the Z number, and the mass number, in this case 12, 13, and 14, is the so-called A the mass number. And so this is just one more notation that some textbooks and periodic tables use. So let's look at uh, hydrogen. All of the isotopes of hydrogen have the same number of protons, that is 1. And so we can look at hydrogen mass 1 as having one proton and zero neutrons. And the relative abundance of this is 99.985. That means the vast majority of hydrogen found in our universe contains hydrogen 1. There are two other isotopes of hydrogen. Hydrogen 2 uh, with one neutron, and that's relative abundance is here. And they sometimes call that deuterium, deut for 2, so hydrogen 2 and hydrogen 3, which has a special name, tritium. And again, the relative abundances are relatively small. So calculating atomic mass. So the def definition of atomic mass is the weighted average mass of the atoms in all of the naturally occurring isotopes of that element. So the formula to calculate average atomic mass looks like this, where we take the relative abundance times the mass number and add that for all of the isotopes. So you repeat that calculation for as many isotopes as exist for an element. 
So the units are AMUs, atomic mass units, and the AMU is defined as exactly one twelfth the mass of a carbon atom, of a carbon 12 atom specifically. So one AMU is roughly the mass of a proton. They're used instead of the actual masses because the actual masses are very small numbers. And remember that the mass of one proton is equivalent to the mass of a neutron. So let's do a calculation of average atomic mass using isotope information for carbon. So there's carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. So to calculate the average atomic mass of carbon, we would use that um, equation and we would do it as follows. We would take the relative abundance, so the actual percent abundance is here. If you divide that by 100, you get the relative abundance. We're just putting it in decimal form. Multiplying it times that isotope's mass, then we take the second one, which is carbon-13, and multiply it by the relative abundance, percent divided by 100, and the same for carbon-14. So when we put all of that in, that's going to come out to this multiplied by this gives me this, this times this gives me this, and this times this gives me this. Thank goodness for calculators. And then if I add that all up, I get 12.0111001 AMUs. And if I compare that to what's found on the periodic table, um, it's 12.0107. So when you do this calculation, what you calculated from the isotope information should be pretty close to what's on the periodic table, and 12.0111 is very close to 12.0107, so we did it correctly. So there are more tutorials that I've made for you on calculating average atomic mass, but for now I'm going to leave off here. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.